I've got three bugs threes now, lost one, had four, and I've had a bug six for quite a while. And I knew in the early days quite a few people, including viewers, had problems with the motors, but I was lucky one might have been from the second batch and was okay. Um, I knew they were kind of plastic motors and I didn't think too much about it until recently. But with using different props on it, I found that I was having trouble tightening the prop up. So I had a look at what was going on and I must admit I was very disappointed to discover it had a thin metal shaft with plastic thread over the top. Plastic is never a good material to uh, cut threads into compared to metal. So I was unimpressed to discover that. My first thought was, oh, I can probably aerodite it. But then I had a look around and I discovered a few people who'd run into the same problem. Either some of them replaced the motors or uh, replaced the top of the motors to avoid cutting wires. But I found at least one guy who'd uh, replaced the plastic motors with Bugs 3 motors. Um, so before I did anything, I, I had a look at some of the others and I realized that one of my other motors the thread, the, sure enough, the plastic thread was starting to strip. So that was it. I thought, we've got to go. I've got to go for metal motors. So I immediately thought Bugs 3 because I, I don't want to burn out the ESCs. I want components that can match. I find the ad adequate power from the Bugs 3, so uh, I thought that's the way to go. And they're cheap too. I had a few spares already, so I just bought two more and waited for them to turn up. So, but uh, disappointing to to see this, particularly in the light of the Bugs 3 Pro where MJX have gone back to metal motors. So step one was to take the leg off to expose the wire running to the motor and then the next step was to unscrew the four screws that hold the uh, hold the motor onto the uh, holder and it turns out there's a metal base plate underneath the motor so this is what happens once I've got the, the screws out. You can see the metal bla base plate there that's separate from the motor. And this is coming up for the moment of truth because I thought I'm just about to find out whether the Bugs 3 will really line up. I mean, I thought they would, having seen examples where people had, had done this already. But you never know until you do it yourself. So, sure enough, perfect lineup. So that was relief point one. And I thought at this point, how hard can this be? So I cut the wire reasonably close to the motor. So if I want to use this motors again, I can solder something on. But I've got plenty of wire left running to the ESCs on the uh, on the quadcopter, so I can uh, I can solder the new wire. So there's the bugs three, just placing it on the base plate, and here I've screwed it on and pushed the wire through. Uh, plenty of wires there, haven't cut them to size yet. Okay, so at this point I've replaced uh, two, two motors, opposite motors. And they're like for like, the same dimples on the top, they line up with the, uh, the A's and B's and all that sort of thing. And I just matched up the colours, so I, I quite rightly assumed that matching the colours would work. My first hint this was not the case, is when I tried it out on the uh, on the back deck, and uh, yeah, yawing madly, but no lift. So I thought, well, there's something wrong here, but I'll worry about it later. So at this point, this is where I decided how to cut the wires. Uh, when I first did this to a Bugs 3, when I broke a body shell, I, I left the wires really long. This time, got a little bit more confidence, so I snipped them a bit, bit shorter. And at this point I'm just stripping the insulation off, uh, ready for soldering. Um, I hadn't done much in the way of soldering. I bought myself a new soldering iron. Modern ones with the electronic temperature control are fantastic. And they're quite cheap, you go to the right place. Because twisting wires together is never going to work with the vibration you get with quad quadcopters. Particularly not for a length of time. So the next step I'm doing here is tinning it. I'm putting a bit of solder on the exposed wires because the more solder you can get on those wires before you try and join them together the easier it is to just melt them together with a quick touch. So up on my bench with my rig behind me with the, the uh, magnifying glass. So this is just a quick overview of 
the process I went through for soldering. So you can see there I've soldered some of the wires. Uh, again, they're all like for like at this stage because I was quite confident I had the right motors in the right place, assuming that they uh, was pretty much the same setup as the Bug 3s. And a very handy thing with this rig, as well as uh, two arms on that bottom shaft, it's got a third arm on a long flexi piece, which is really good for holding wires. So the whole idea is here, I've got two mini clamps that hold wires in just the right position. And if I'm patient enough to get it right, I can then just put a little bit of solder on, hold the hot iron on and melt them together. So just zooming in to show uh, what it looks like. Uh, those little arms are at the fierce, so I wrapped a bit of tape around them to avoid doing too much damage to the wires that I'm soldering. Okay, so I've now got all four motors on and it's time, time for the test. As I say, I had some misgivings, which turned out to be perfectly justified. So I can control the rudder, I'm getting your okay, but uh, the throttle, it just goes berserk and no lift off. So I'm rapidly coming to the conclusion there's only one thing to do, and sure enough I've changed over the, uh, the red and yellow wires. Um, instead of going red to red, it's now red to yellow. And uh, again, I couldn't believe this, so I had a good look at the motors that I'd taken off, and sure enough they got dimples to show one type, the A or the B, and no dimples on the other side. So I then looked at the Bug 3, and yep, the same kind of um, code with the dimples and the A and the B arms and props. So I thought, well, I've now got it wired up exact. well, I've got the motors in the same position with the same sort of coding as a Bug 3, but I had to actually reverse the motors to, to make things work. So. Quite why it's like that, I don't know, but it's something worth pointing out to other people who want to do this. Because if at first you, f you get the result I, I did, you might think you've done something wrong. But it's just M MJX taking a slightly different approach between the Bugs 3 and the Bugs 6. So after sorting that out, I couldn't wait for the insulation to dry on the wires. I get up in the morning, I'm still in my dressing gown, I'm out in the front lawn for a test fly. Give it a bit of stick it around this point. And it punches up and away nicely. So very happy with that. As usual I'll run a battery down and I'm now getting battery warning. So that's enough to show me that uh, this works. I'm looking forward to getting out there, getting the camera back on it and uh, enjoying another bugs. So I hope this helps, and if it does, uh, yeah, happy flying. More of it.